When the runaway train, also known as the holidays, comes rolling around, we know it's time for cookies. But if you don't know where to start, I've got you covered. saying the cookies are only meant to be made around the holidays. I just feel like that's the time that people are baking them the most. Unless they're chocolate chip cookies, which are kind of a year-round thing. Not mad about that. I just want to let you guys know that I was featured in Bake From Scratch magazine, their holiday cookie issue, which I think is pretty dope. So basically, out of all the recipes here, one of which will be from the Bake From Scratch magazine feature, which you'll find out later which one that is. Now before anyone asks, if you wanna get a copy of the issue that I was featured in, there'll be a link in the description, go click it. Now, let's do this, shall we? Now we're gonna start this off with sugar cookies because it just felt right. So you're gonna start by placing one cup or 227 grams of softened butter into the bowl of a stand mixer fitted with the paddle attachment. To that, you're gonna add one and a quarter cup or 285 grams of granulated sugar. Gradually work your mixer up to medium high speed and beat the butter and sugar together until it reaches a sort of like a creamy light consistency. Lower your mixture speed to medium speed and then add two teaspoons or six grams of vanilla extract and one whole egg. Mix that together until it's thoroughly combined then with your mixer on low speed slowly add two and a half cups or 312 grams of all-purpose flour I forgot to film this part but I also mixed in one teaspoon and six grams of fine sea salt and one and a quarter teaspoon or seven grams of baking powder in with that flour so it's actually a flour mixture of those two things now once that comes together to form a cohesive dough you're gonna take that and roll them into two inch diameter balls and roll each ball in granulated sugar and then place them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper be sure to space them far enough apart to account for spreading so something like two and a half three inches apart would probably be the safest bet then just bake those at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 12 minutes and that's it sugar cookies boom and the next one is gonna be one of those featured recipes from the bake from scratch magazine which is chocolate tahini rugalach I hope I said that right you know you really got to get throaty on that rugalach maybe not I don't know I'm sorry if I'm being disrespectful in the bowl of a stand mixer fitted with the paddle attachment, add one cup or 227 grams of unsalted butter and eight ounces or 225 grams of cream cheese and beat until creamy. Stop being intermittently to scrape down the sides of the bowl as necessary. Then add two egg yolks, one at a time, beating well after each addition. Then beat in one teaspoon or four grams of vanilla extract. Then with the mixer on low speed, gradually add two cups or 250 grams of all-purpose flour and half a teaspoon or one and a half grams of kosher salt. Then just mix until you have a cohesive dough. Divide your dough in half and shape each half into a rough disc. It doesn't have to be perfect. Wrap it in plastic wrap and refrigerate it for at least three hours. Six hours is ideal, and then overnight is ultra ideal. You know what I'm saying? Then roll half of your dough into an oval a quarter of an inch thick using a bench scraper or a knife to cut the edge to form a roughly clean rectangle. Then spread half a cup or 133 grams of tahini all over the entire surface of that rectangle, leaving a little bit of a border. If there seems like there's too much, you can always take a little bit off. You don't want it to be too thick. And then you're gonna sprinkle three ounces or 88 grams of dark chocolate that's been finely chopped all over the entire surface of that rectangle. Roll that up into a tight log, and then using a sharp knife, cut that log into one and a half inch slices. Place it on baking sheets fitted with parchment paper. Repeat with the remaining dough and tahini and whatnot. Then brush each of the slices with egg wash, which will be one egg just whisk. Lightly sprinkle them with some sesame seeds, and then bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 30 minutes. And that's it, chocolate tahini rugula. Now, like I said before, if you guys want to get a copy of the Bake From Scratch magazine that I was featured in, that this recipe is featured in, along with two other recipes, then there will be a link in the description. Be sure to go check it out. So next up is going to be Salted Butter Hazelnut Russian Tea Cakes, also known as Russian Tea Cakes Snowballs. They have a couple different names, but we're going to start with one cup or 227 grams of salted butter that has been softened. And you're going to mix that together with three quarters of a cup or 80 grams of powdered sugar until thoroughly combined. Add in two teaspoons or six grams of vanilla extract and mix that together. Then add in the rest of your ingredients, which is gonna be two cups or 250 grams of all-purpose flour, half a cup or 60 grams of finely chopped hazelnuts, 
a quarter cup or 25 grams of finely chopped pecans, and a quarter teaspoon or two grams of fine sea salt. Mix together until thoroughly combined and you've got a complete cohesive dough. Then roll that dough into one inch in diameter balls and place them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and bake at 350 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes or just until the cookies are set. You don't necessarily want to brown these too much, otherwise they'll get overcooked real quickly. Then remove them and cool them on a wire rack for 10 minutes. Just, you know, not all the way. You want them to stay warm and then roll them in powdered sugar while they're still warm and then cool them all the way on a wire rack. And as Gordon Ramsay would say, Russian tea cakes done. Now this wouldn't be a holiday cookie video if I didn't include the obligatory chocolate chip cookie. Now I'm not going to give you the recipe here because I already have a great recipe in another video which I will leave in the link which I will leave as a link in the description. So if you want to go check out my chocolate chip cookie recipe, it'll be down in the description. So here's some B-roll to keep you uh, excited about it. And last but not least is chewy molasses ginger snap cookies. So you're going to start off by making your flour mixture, which is going to consist of two cups or 250 grams of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon or seven grams of ginger powder, one tablespoon or seven grams of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon or a little under a gram of ground nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon or a little under a gram of cloves, and a half teaspoon or three grams of fine sea salt. Wow, that was long-winded. Anyway, you're gonna whisk that together. Then in a separate bowl, you're gonna whisk together half a cup plus two tablespoons or 113 grams of melted unsalted butter with half a cup or 110 grams of brown sugar and a quarter cup or 90 grams of blackstrap molasses. Now you can drop the blackstrap molasses a little bit if you don't like it too molassesy. That is a word. Anyway, you're gonna whisk that together until everything's completely homogenous. Then you're gonna add in one egg plus one egg yolk and whisk that together. Then you're just gonna fold in your flour mixture with the liquid ingredients until it's thoroughly combined and you've got a dough. Roll those dough balls into two inch in diameter balls and roll that in granulated sugar and bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 15 minutes or until they're all the way cooked through. And again, be sure to space them far enough apart so that they don't conjoin when they're baking because that's so sad. Chewy molasses ginger snap cookies. You know, this this isn't always a crowd winner, I gotta be honest with you. I personally love them, but not everybody likes the molasses flavor. All right guys, and that is it. That's my personal choice for the best holiday cookies, but I know, I just know, that someone's gonna say something like, what the heck you left out my favorite cookies? How could you do that? These are, this, this is a, a mandatory that you pick this cookie. There's a lot of good cookies out there. These are the ones that I generally like to see on the table. That's, that's it. If there are others out there that you prefer, that is okay. You know, thumbprint cookies almost made it into this. They were very close, they almost made it. I, to be honest, I just didn't wanna make them. I'm just, gonna be, I'm just gonna be straight up honest. Did not wanna make them. With all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next week.